What's up, guys? Today, we have a very special guest, Louis Golth from Denver, Colorado. And what we're going to talk about is not only how did he get into the luxury space and how he became a top producing agent, but also why he started introducing social media into his business. And we're going to talk about a couple really cool key things. Number one is the one Instagram post that he made that attracted him three clients, which netted him $3.4 million in closed transactions, as well as how and why he started incorporating YouTube, which has now started attracting clients on autopilot for him from the very beginning. So this is going to be an incredible story for anybody that's looking to start incorporating social media into the business and prove the exact things that you can do from day one in order to start to get incredible results. So break out your pen and paper. Super excited for this one. Take notes. And without further ado, let's introduce you to Louis Gold. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Super excited to have a powerhouse from my group at EXP here from Denver to talk to you guys about how he's been able to build a top producing business and started implementing social media strategies and has just absolutely taken off. So we're going to dive deep into Instagram. We're going to talk about YouTube today and also how Louie got to the point where he became a very well-known agent and top producer in his market. So Louie, what's up, man? Welcome on. What's up, mate? How's it going, man? Good, good. Excited to have you on here. You know, you and I have known each other for quite some time. And, you know, it's been really admirable to see how well you've built your business in the Denver area. And you've done extremely well. So, you know, for people that don't know you yet, why don't we roll into a brief introduction about who you are, where you came from, how you built, you know, a pretty powerful business. And then let's go straight into some pretty creative social media strategies that you've been able to attract clients with. Yeah, sure. Well, what's up, everyone? Uh, Louis Galt here. Um, yeah, you know, my story started well way back. Obviously, I, I, I grew up in Scotland, um, in a town just west of uh, Glasgow in Scotland. And um, I was uh, a musician at the time. I grew up with music and my family grew up playing music. And then, you know, I ended up getting a degree in music. And uh, that, that kind of journey, there's a long story cut short here, but I'm sure I'll explain it on my YouTube channel at some point. But that journey with music took me over to the States and I ended up here, met a beautiful girl, got married, had kids and all that stuff. Um, but as 99.9% .9 of musicians will tell you, um, it doesn't work out very well. Uh, it's pretty much the same as acting and stuff like that. The, the you know, the 1% of the 1% make it in the music industry and everyone else has to kind of fall back. Um, so from there, I got into the fitness industry here in Denver. I was living in Denver um, and I was training in MMA and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, and I just decided to jump into the fitness industry. Um, so I started boot camps. I started training people out my garage. I never wanted to join a, a big box gym because I've always been more of an entrepreneur. So I didn't want to kind of join a big box gym and uh, adhere to the rules and regulations of what they were doing. Uh, I want to kind of be outside the box and do my own thing which kind of um, really helped with me to grow my business and fitness. So I had a bunch of clients. Um, we put on big events. Um, I was fortunate enough to be involved in, in Red Rocks in Colorado called Fitness on the Rocks. Uh, a good friend of mine, um, Alex Chapman, put those on and we were running workouts up there. So I built this big fitness industry, but um, again, same with music. Um, with fitness, the difference was there's a ceiling and you just can't get past that ceiling. There's not enough hours in a day um, because in the fitness game, it's very hard to make money when you're not trading your time. So I could do one-on-one -on -one with clients. I could do group fitness. I can do classes. But when I'm not physically training people, it's very, very hard to create an income. Um, and at this point, I've got two little kids. I've got a wife, you know, we're trying to kind of get our stuff uh, moving. So I realized that I had to create another opportunity to produce income um so from there um i was introduced to the real estate world and really i saw that the transition from fitness to music was very very similar um it's all about helping people you know and that's kind of a cliche that you'll hear realtors say i just got into the business to help people and i did but i also got into the business to make money um because <laughs> that would help me and my family um so i kept but i took those skills uh, from the fitness world into real estate and really it's all about being able to talk to people, being able to communicate and be able to listen and understand people's goals. Because just like in fitness, you might have someone who wants to lose 50 pounds, but you might have someone who wants to put on muscle, you know, so everyone's very, very different. And it's the same in real estate. You know, you may have people who are first time buyers, 
investors, people who want to flip, people who are buying their second or third property. So everyone has a completely different and unique story. And my job is to get them from point A to point B where they close on the home or sell their home. So um, yeah, I, I, can, I just kind of translate that and, and navigate through that process. Um, you know, joined the team um, at B1 in Colorado here. We ended up getting bought out by Compass. And then a couple months ago, um, ended up transitioning over to EXP to, to build out a team here um, and push on like that. So it's been a crazy, crazy, incredible journey so far. Um, and it's just getting started, really. Yeah, man, I think it's incredible. And, and there's a lot of parallels between, you know, joining a traditional big box gym and a traditional big box brokerage, but we'll talk about that later. Um, what I'd love to know is, you know, you got to the point where you're doing pretty substantial amounts of transactions. So, you know, what did you do to get to the point where you started increasing and, and getting to the top producer level from a transactional perspective, and then piggybacking off that, what kind of excited you about starting to implement social media into your business because a lot of people that get to the top producer level just kind of sit there and say okay you know I've, I've kind of figured it out uh, I don't need to do anything different but you kind of took a different angle where you're like okay I've got it figured out how do I scale in a more modern way that allows me to duplicate and save time but still make the same amount of, amount of money so you know what did that process look like for you getting to the transactional level and then growing from there yeah, so in the beginning when I when I started real estate, um, we did a giant Zillow spend. So we did a huge spend on Zillow with our team. Uh, and any any agent who might be watching who does Zillow, like there's nothing wrong with it. It's great, but it's like a heroin drip, you know, like of buyers just coming in, you know. So it's buyers, buyers. You take, you know, you roll your dice every time with the call, try and get them, you know, converted into clients, and you go from there. And it's great. Um, and we did some great, great business with Zillow, but. The problem that I saw with it was there was no repeat business and there was no real referrals coming from the Zillow um, uh, calls and business. We kind of jokingly refer to it kind of like the Tinder of uh, real estate. It's just, you know, Zillow, you know, you're just on Zillow looking at homes and someone pops up, whatever. I'll take you on a date, you know. Um, so it was kind of like that. We uh, and, and I just felt that there was more out there. And really the, the, the big switch happened for me recently, actually, um, I was always, I always, probably half of my business was from Zillow and half of it was from my sphere. So like my Jiu Jitsu gym, where we're really, really tight with each other. Um, you know, lots of family that, you know, my wife has here, good friends that we have, you know, so, so you know, that was kind of the regular uh, route that people take, you know, you work your sphere and stuff like that. But when um, COVID hit, and we got shut down and stuff like that i really started kind of tuning in and figuring out like okay now that i can't get out here and meet people as much as i can and now that i can't go out and shake hands and go to events and just you know be in people's um, general you know um, places where they are like how are we going to do this and i've always you know obviously i've always been in social media and stuff like that um and you know just like everyone is but i've never really harnessed how to use it and, you know, once we met and, and started chatting um, about everything, I realized that there were everyone now, because they can't be at events, they can't be at, you know, church, they can't be at the gym and stuff like that. This is the only place they are. And it's right here. And this is where they are. I would say like half of the day, 14 hours a day, something like that was the statistics at the time. So it was like, okay, well, if they're there, I have to be in front of them and I have to be, you know, just present and being who I am, but on camera and in social media and as I start to do that you know we start to really plan out okay what are we trying to say what is our message here what actually sets us apart from you know other agents and as I started kind of finding my way in this social media kind of journey like really building my business out there um, all of a sudden I start getting listings from Instagram you know and I was like this can't be right you know because we met and you know, we, everyone watching this, I'm sure knows, you know, your, your, your story, but like when we first met, I was like, there's no way, there's no way you get all that business from, <laughs> from social media. So I was like, well, I was like, whatever, I'm stuck in the house. Anyway, my kids are driving me crazy. I was like, let's go. So, you know, and then all of a sudden it started really kicking in and I was like, wow, this is a whole nother way to do business and a really natural way, even though we're not in front of people. And, you know, since then, I don't have a Zillow spend at all anymore. I don't spend any money on Zillow. 
I spent all on social media marketing and marketing myself and my business is really transformed, you know. I think it's amazing, man. And I love that, you know, I see that so often as people are like, oh, there's no way this works. Like they're, you know, my <laughs> average buyer is 50 years old. They're not on Instagram and they start yeah. seeing like they, you know, when they commit to it. And I think that's a common theme, especially with implementing social media as a real estate agent is a lot of people are always looking for the objection. They, they as a realtor, you're usually an objection handler yet as an agent, you're also creating your own objections of why to not start to use social media. Oh, it doesn't yeah. work. Oh, my buyers aren't on there. Oh, you can't get listings. Oh, this, oh, that. And oh, it's saturated. And they always come up with these excuses. And then I've never seen somebody consistently execute on social media as an agent and not do well. Only mm -hmm. the ones that don't get results are ones that start, stop. They have no commitment to the process. What I'd love to touch on is what have you found to be some of your best Instagram posts that have attracted clients? Because I know for me, what's done really well is Instagram stories, kind of keeping that top of mind awareness, you know, maintaining a front of mind presence with these people on a daily basis, but then mm -hmm. sharing more of the personal side of things where people on Instagram felt like they actually got to know the real me. And that's very, you know, from a, uh, a referral perspective, people really like that because now they're referring to somebody that they feel like they know. So for you, what have you found to be some of the best Instagram posts that have actually attracted business, whether it be buyers, sellers to you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, picking one post in general is tough. The consistency is more for me where everything was, but you know, um, honestly, mostly posts that aren't specifically real estate related, they're more about Denver. And that's what I've found has really, really um, changed things because most people aren't on there. Like how do mortgage payments work? You know, like a lot, a, a lot of people aren't on there. Most people are like, what's Denver like, you know, and searching for things about Denver and it pops up like, you know, I've, I've got a video out there, you know, eight things you should know before you move to Denver. And that one really took off um, because that's what people are interested in. They want to know someone who's got their feet on the ground in Denver um, and kind of knows what's going on, especially for someone who moved here from a whole nother country, because my wife is a native here, but, you know, I came over here and I was like, this is very, very different. So, you know, I can really tell people what it's like to move here and start from nothing and, and you know, and, 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 and keep going like that. But yeah, post about Denver. I did, I did, I posted on Instagram. Um, I can't remember the number, but it was a certain number of ways to prep your house before selling it. So how are you going to get the most money for selling your house? Um, and from that one post, I got three listings. Um, and it was very strange because it was, um, people must have shared it to their friends or something like that. So I got DMs like on Instagram and I'd never got this before. And this was when I was like, oh, wow, this is real. Um, I got two, two DMs on that one and then one phone call. Um, and it was like, hey, you know, I saw this video. Um, we live just, you know, down the street from me. Can you come and look at the house? And then do, do, do. And then that turned into um, just over 3.5 million worth of, um, worth of uh, sales. So it's just like, why have I not been doing this forever? You know, it's the, the, the thing that I'm seeing really um, is that you know, we have all these old school methods that we do in real estate. We do the door knocking, we do the, the cold calling, we do the, the, the mailers and stuff like that. But real estate industry is staying here while the world progresses. And we, why are we not progressing with it? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So once I started having that mindset of progressing with everyone and where everyone is and how everyone wants to communicate, that's when Instagram especially and YouTube um, took off. Yeah, I think it's it's amazing because as a realtor, especially getting into the business, we're always taught become like the expert leader in your market and, you know, become a, a source of knowledge, become a hub of being able to answer questions that anybody has about your market. And what I see a lot, and I, I'm glad that you touched on this, is that there's a lot of agents that actually do know a lot about their city. They do know a lot about real estate. I get a lot of, you know, people messaging me saying, Mike, you know, I've been in real estate for 10 15, 20 years, I know any, I know more than any of these new agents, 
but they're crushing me because everybody mm. knows them and nobody knows that I know this much about real estate. And I get that all the time is that there's all these experienced agents that really do know more than the average agent in their market, but nobody knows that because they don't share their knowledge. Yeah. And I think it's great that you just capitalize on the opportunity to say, hey, you know, instead of just focusing on the people that I'm getting in front of on a daily basis based on my own effort, let's leverage these social platforms that are in front of people every day to share the knowledge I have so that anybody looking can find it. And I think that's where the scalability aspect comes from. Um, and I think that's incredible that, that you've managed to do that. And yeah. the consistency is so important. And, you know, I, I think, you know, maybe you want to touch on that before we get into YouTube is, mm -hmm. is a lot of people struggle with being committed to the process saying, Oh, my God, uh, you know, I've posted 20 times I've posted for the last two months, and I haven't got any deals. But then you see people like you people like, you know, a, a lot of other agents in our group that have just committed to the process. And there's always like this inflection point. And that's the big thing that people don't realize with content marketing is that with social media marketing paid ads, you put in X and you get out Y and it's kind of this linear growth depending on the budget. But with content marketing being organic, unpaid social media content is that it's more of like a, a hockey stick or bell curve where it starts slow. And then there's going to be a point where it connects and people start to recognize and then it goes off. But it's almost like that, you know, the post you always see in entrepreneurship where somebody's digging for the diamond and they stop like five feet before they hit it. And that's what yeah. happens with a lot of people on social media is that they give up just before they were about to hit that breakthrough. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I, I really, when we got shut down and stuff like that, I, I made a commitment that this was what I was going to focus on. Um, and for me, it's every piece of content I put out, I just feel like it's putting it in the savings account, you know, because it's it's a living, breathing piece of material that's out there. It's not just a one and done thing. Like that's the thing, especially with YouTube. And that's why I love it so much. It's not like you put it out and it has a few days and then it goes away forever. It's No, it's sitting there and it's living and breathing. If people search for things, it comes up. And that's why the, the consistency is everything. Building that catalog, you know, because when you start, you do your first video, second video, third video. And you're like, I've got three videos. If someone goes on my channel and sees three videos, I'm going to look like an idiot, you know. But it is what it is. And, you know, touching back on, on, on the real estate world as well, like when I started doing this, a lot of agents that I know, um, and, you know, it's still respect, but respected at the time, were kind of like mocking me a little bit. And, you know, they, they were like kind of laughing at it and stuff. And I was like, for me, I was just like, whatever, man. I'm just, I believe in what I'm doing. I'm going to do this thing because... What happens in two years time or who knows when all this craziness stuff is going to be over but i'm going to have like a huge catalog of information that people can look up and when you search for denver i'm going to be the one that comes up when you go on google youtube instagram search for denver i'm going to be the one that comes up you know not maybe not right now maybe not six months in a year but in a couple of years like it is going to be me because i'm going to be consistently plastering the internet with information about my market and who i am so for me, it's it's a it's a long it's a long game I'm playing right now. You know, I think if you get into the social media thing and expect instant results, you're setting yourself up for failure. Hundred percent, and that's I think that's a mindset shift that a lot of people struggle with. Is that you know entrepreneurs, but agents specifically, really struggle with putting in a dollar or putting in an hour and not knowing when they're going to get that multiplied back in return. Um, but I love that you touched on the fact that, you know, people talked a bit of shit about you because I actually just met with the CEO of my old brokerage um, yesterday for lunch. And, and we had a good chat about the fact that, you know, this year, and, and I'm not going to get into too many details, but from a financial and a purchase perspective, I've been able to make every single one of my childhood dreams come true this year all of which came through the ability to leverage my content. And he, and we were just joking about the fact they're like, Mike, you know, remember when this, that, and that agent, you know, were poking fun at you talking shit behind the scenes about your content. And it's so stupid in your purple car and, you know, laughing about it. And, you know, fast forward this year, it's gotten to the point where, you know, that's not even on my radar and it's, it's, you know, completely changed my life in ways that I never knew would happen, but it was just because again, when you look at anything, and this is a really important message that I hope people understand that are watching this is that when you consistently execute on something that's proven to work, 
at some point it will work out. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people struggle is that they're trying to find the next golden nugget. They're trying to find the next secret, you know, shiny penny that's going to be an overnight success. But in order to build real success, all you have to do is look at what's been proven to work, build a plan out around what's a relation to your personality and just execute it. And, you know, I'd love to now talk about you two because I love that you were very authentic on your Instagram posts. And I highly urge, you know, anybody watching to go check out Louis on Instagram, but also go follow his YouTube channel. Because what I love about you is you put out very similar content that I did when I got started on Instagram. And what I mean by that is that a lot of people make these false assumptions that you have to go have, you know, professionally staged photo shoots and you have to go get a professional photographer and you have to stage it and look perfect and all these things. But you and I were very much of, okay, you've got this device right here. It's got an incredible camera. You can flip it around and document something authentically. You can share your journey and not be perfect. And that's what a lot of people resonate with. But let's talk about why you started committing to YouTube because that started to get to the point where, you know, you made a post in our group the other day where you attracted a buyer through YouTube. So what's that journey been like? And, and how has that started to play a role into your overall business plan? Yeah, you know, that... That was the kind of biggest leap of faith for me. And it was the biggest one where I was like, oh, I'm going to look like such a dick here, you know, because, you know, when you think about YouTubers, you think about like little girls, you know, girls who do makeup shows and like that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, or at least that's a perception. I was like, oh, you, so, um, but, you know, I, I follow a lot of people on, you know, YouTube and Instagram and I read a lot of books and, and the majority of successful people, the motto is like, just get it done, just jump in and do it, you know? So I was thinking, well, I'll need to save up and buy a big camera. I'll need to buy this and buy that. And it's not, I bought a $20 circle light from Amazon and I used my phone for all my videos. And I was like, all right, let's just go for it. So yeah, I jumped in and, you know, obviously the first couple of videos are always not the greatest, but um, I think what helped me was my background in fitness. I'm used to talking to people and uh, quite clearly and precisely and a group of people. So I'm not like, I'm not super stuttery and nervous in front of a camera. Um, so that kind of helped me, I think, get, can I get right into it? But yeah, you know, I started making videos. Um, I, I, I did a lot of research on keywords and what videos worked for different real estate things and kind of started, you know, knocking them out. And I think I was about, I was about 10 videos in, I think. And I was, you know, and they had, they all had like maybe, you know, 30, 40, 50 likes, something like that, a couple comments. And I was like, okay, like, I'll just keep this going because I think it's going to hit. And then um, I put out the one about eight things you should know about moving to Denver, because the first few videos, I think the mistake I made was what do I want to watch? And I think that's the thing that I, I was like, how do I make myself sound like a really great real estate agent? And that was like, my first few videos I think that's what I was trying to do you know and <clears throat> at one point I was having a conversation with, with my wife and you know we were, we were like well what do people actually want to know about um and it was well let's talk tell them about Denver and tell them about what it's like here and you know what things so I was like okay I'll make this one <clears throat> so it was eight things you should know about before you move to Denver and I made that video put it out and um about two days later I got a um, a comment on the the video, like, hey, I was thinking about moving to Denver, did do, do, do. And I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, hey, you should email me if you want to chat more. And I was like, she's probably not going to email me. And then boom, my inbox, like, hey, can we set up a call? And I was like, no way did this just happen, you know? Um, so, you know, it's, again, it, it's that long game. And, but it's really about putting yourself out there. And you, I think YouTube was the biggest hurdle for me because that really is the one where people start to like mock you openly or like, are oh, you a YouTuber, you know, like that kind of thing. And, you know, and you have to present things a certain way and you do have to be engaging and you have to be, you know, upbeat and present yourself well. So, you know, you do get some haters for sure. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not doing this for them. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for my wife. I'm doing it for my kids. And if this is going to grow my business uh, to eventually get to a place where, you know, I don't have to worry about too much, then... I don't care what people say, you know, so, but yeah, so, you know, I've got um, that buyer lead off of there. Um, my videos, the views and the subscribers have been moving up and up and up. So yeah, everything's great. And I actually, right now, I really enjoy doing it actually, because what it helps me do, I feel like it makes me a better agent because 
I research a lot more. And that's the thing about it. Like, you know, spitting out videos isn't like, it doesn't come naturally to me, but when I research a topic, then I can just get all the data, all the facts and just present them. It helps because when you, when you teach, this is like what we do in jujitsu, in jiu-jitsu, you know, you can learn a lot of strangleholds and moves and stuff like that. But when you actually have to teach those things, that's when you really start to understand them. Um, and it's the same thing here. So when I started researching more about Denver, researching more about interest rates or whatever I was doing, it helps me It helps me be a better agent for my, my clients as well. So the YouTube journey has uh, been great. You know, it's only been, what, um, four months, five months I've been doing it. Um, but it's transforming my business slowly but surely for for sure and i have a lot of agents reaching out to me now like hey how do i do this how do you do it like what, how do you search for topics and stuff so it's really cool yeah man it's there's a lot i want to uh, that i really want to unpack there because you know first thing in terms of the haters and and i love that you brought that up because i heard all the same crap and and you know the bfs that you hear and that video is so stupid and of course they're going to comment on the ones where it's like your first video where you don't even know how to deliver a message and they're calling you out on it but you know it goes back to the saying you're never going to get um you know, you're never going to get hate from somebody that's doing more than you, right? And what I always did is I realized and I started analyzing it, I've never received one negative comment or piece of feedback from another person that actually has a YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. it's basically any of the negativity is just a reflection of somebody basically raising their hand saying, hey, you know, I can't do what you're doing. So I'm going to try and bring you down because I acknowledge I'm not as good as you. Mm -hmm. And I always just phrase it in the way like all these idiots are literally just admitting the fact that they can't do this. So they're trying to claw me back down. Right. And, you know, I like that you fat you you also alluded to the fact that it started slow. Right. And a lot of people see my YouTube channel now approaching 20,000 subscribers and they say, you know, Mike, how did you how did you get to that point? Well, you know, if you look at my videos, January of 2019, I had 50 to 100 views of video. And then by mid year, I started having one to 200 views of video. And then by the end of the year, three to 500. And now, you know, a thousand to 60,000 a video. And it slowly incrementally starts to build off each other um, to the point where it'll come. And I think a lot of people need to get away from the vanity metrics because they post a video, see they get seven views and say, nobody watches me. It's never going to work. What am I doing? Wasting my time doing this. And they need to understand again, the process of committing to something that will work out if you're consistent doing the right things. But with YouTube, you do have to do the right things in terms of optimizing your content, things like that. But I really love the fact that you had that conversation with your wife because you unpacked a really important thing that a lot of people struggle with, which is how to find video topics. And a lot of people are looking for some disruptive groundbreaking video that's going to go viral to make, but every video has been done. All that you need to do is use the echo effect and say, you know, ask yourself, what do my buyers ask me? What do my sellers ask me? What do people moving from out of state ask me? and turn those questions into videos. So now not only are you addressing something that most people are searching, but you can also send that video to somebody the next time they ask for it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really cool thing because you can nurture your database with it. You can send in emails and like you alluded to, which aligns very much with ha what happened with your Instagram post is people shared that Instagram post about eight things you need to know before moving to Denver a lot more people are more inclined to share a YouTube video that you sent out via email to them about how to buy a house in Denver than they are an email. And I love, you know, the final thing I want to touch on before we kind of top on, touch on the last topic is the fact that you talked about rolling into this opportunity of learning. And that's been the biggest thing for me is that a lot of people say, you know, Mike, what am I going to talk about on these videos? How am I going to put out this thing? But that's the beauty in it is that you don't yet know. You have to go learn. And so many people get into YouTube saying, I don't know what to say. Good, go learn it. If you do not know what to say on a video, it's because you don't know it well enough. And the fact that, for example, it's a great thing for not only increasing your communication skills, but also the fact that in order to put out a market update video, you got to know the market stats. So it keeps you in check with yourself because if you're doing a monthly market update, 
you have to prepare for that video. But now since you prepare for that video, if anybody asks you about the market, you know, like that, you don't have to go research it. So it's really good for heightening your awareness of your own market, learning cool things about if you have to do a video about, you know, the top five restaurants or coffee shops in Denver, you're now going to know the best places to go in Denver for whenever anybody asks you. So you become a resource. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about, because I think it it's really brings all this together is you were at what most people consider to be one of the most brand heavy brokerages, Compass. A lot of people talk about their luxury branding. A lot of people think that being a part of a brokerage like that, um, as, as incredible of a brokerage as it is, that the name and the branding is going to be the be all end all to break into the luxury space, build their business and you know take them to their wildest dreams in real estate. What kind of brought you to the point where you started entertaining the idea of partnering with eXp amongst all the stigma, all the bad reputation. And then what kindly, you know, finally brought you over the edge to say, okay, I'm actually doing this. It's the right decision. Yeah. Um, we might need another two hours on this video to get to go into it. Um, and but, you do you have know, a video on your YouTube channel about this. So I will put yeah. that in the description where you go into depth, but at a high level, let's just kind of summarize that. You know, for me, I, I, was, I, I was starting to question things, honestly, not about Compass in general, because like you said, Compass is a great brokerage and the managing broker there and everyone there was phenomenal. But for me, it was more about where is this industry going? Like, where are we right now? What's going on? So what does the brokerage model look like and what does it actually do for me? Like, you know, I, I give my per percentage to the brokerage what am I actually getting in return? So, you know, I was getting sexy branding. I was getting, you know, really cool listing presentations and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, what I realized, and especially once I started getting into social media um, and YouTube, um, because I didn't really present it as with Compass, it was just me, it was just Louis. And I realized that no one cares. Like no one, the only people who care about what brokerage you're with are other agents. Um, no one, none of my clients have, I don't think anyone's ever asked me who I'm with um, as, as far as like a listing presentation, as far as meeting buyers for the first time going out. Um, so I was like, okay, well, if that's not important, um, then what other opportunities are out there? Um, so, you know, like I said, for me, like the main thing is my family, right? Um, and how do I grow from just being a broker, crushing deals, taking my percentage, and then resetting and going again. So I find buyers, I crush deals, I get commission, then I reset buyer commission. You know, um, I was like, how many years of this do I have left? Like how, cause I, I work hard, man. Like I, I work really hard. So I'm like, okay, like in 10 years time, do I still envision myself like crushing this hard? And I was like, I don't know. So I started looking into, you know, we had met obviously and you transitioned to EXP and we were having conversations about it and really for me the big thing um was uh, like we touched on earlier it was getting back some of my time um instead of trading it um trading my time for dollars you know like that's um that's really what brought me to the point of switching over because of the other opportunities with exp with the stock awards with um you know building out a team and a downline and stuff like that that was just something that wasn't available at other other brokerages for me um, but honestly, aside from that, the biggest part about coming over was our team, um, what you and Connor were doing and everything. The reason that, that I made a jump into social media um, isn't because I knew, it, I knew it worked, but I didn't know anyone personally who made it work. And after I met you, then I was like, oh, I actually know someone who's made this work. And he can explain to me how this process works. And because of that, I was like, it was like a light bulb. I was like, okay, I can actually, I have a resource now in Mike who can show me how all this stuff works and I can, I can make that go. So when you switch over to EXP, I was like, what's going on here? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No one had ever explained the, 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 the brokerage to me properly. And I was like, oh man. And then we talked about it. So yeah, really for me, you know, high level, I, I feel like the industry is changing. I feel like brokerage models are changing. Now Zillow are taking on their actual loan agents. You know, if you, if you read up on a bunch of stuff, the brokerage model is changing. 
And brokerages generally don't give you what you're giving them. You know, if you give them 20, 30, 40% of your commission, they don't give you that back. They don't, they don't, they don't make it worth that, what they're giving you. But our team and, and our brokerage in EXP is doing that in abundance and over and above. Um, so, you know, really for me, it was a huge opportunity and I just, you know, I couldn't pass it down. And now it's the best decision I ever made, honestly. I think it's awesome, man. And, and it's so exciting that now other people get to partner with you and you get to, you know, share that experience. And I think you're a prime example of what a true EXP agent is in the sense that, you know, a lot of people have this stigma that they just go out and recruit and attract and that's it, but you're still crushing deals. You're still a top producer. And, and that's actually the case with a lot of people in the brokerage. It just doesn't get that reputation because you have a few bad apples that, you know, ruin every party. Um, but I think it's incredible because now, you know, you not only have the experience to share from the transactional and luxury side, but you have the experience now that leading up to your transition, you've really executed and demonstrated yourself how these social media strategies can work. So now when people partner with you, not only do they have the ability to learn how to take their business to the top producer icon level, but they also get to the point where they know how to do it the modern way. So I think that's what makes partnering with you an incredible opportunity for people. Um, and again, if anybody wants to know what that looks like, just click the link in the description in the pinned comment, and we can set up a, a chat where you can talk with Louis about partnering with him. But I think it's incredible, man. It's really inspiring to see that you and I are so similar in the fact that all we do is work hard, execute, commit, and are consistent. And when you have that recipe, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what brokerage you're with, what model you're using, you'll always be successful. It just comes back to getting your time back so that you get to enjoy the things that you got into the business to achieve. Because if you make all this money and you have no time to enjoy it, all that money is deemed useless. So um, really incredible, man. You know, any last words aside from, you know, people making sure they check out your YouTube channel, what can we expect from Louis going forward in the next, you know, months and years? Yeah, you know, yeah, obviously check out, I'm sure everything will be in the description below, YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. Um, you know, if anyone has any questions, just reach out. I mean, for me, um, you know, my wife um, is now on my team. Um, she, she got her license recently. Um, she, her story will be coming out soon. She's a platinum selling a musician, uh, huge stuff she did. So she's going to be coming on board. Um, and you know, I'm building out this team here in Denver and it's more, I'm building, I'm building a team that we really resonate together and it feels like a team and it feels like a real collection of people who are helping each other and helping each other get to the next level, you know? So that's kind of really my focus, especially for for now and getting into 2021. Um, I'm still going to do deals because I, I love real estate. Um, but for me, building out a team of agents and helping them understand how to keep progressing and stay ahead of the curve and ahead of some of the, the agents who during the lockdown and COVID and stuff just sat on the couch and you know watched reruns of whatever shows they were watching at the time to actually be proactive and to make content that's going to live and work for you while you're sleeping. And that's really what I want to do is help people just take over Denver and, 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 and really start crushing it over here. So, um, yeah, you know, honestly, like, you know, in closing, like I was feel very, very fortunate to have met you and have to met Connor and, be introduced to this side of the business that I think a lot of people are just missing out on. They really are. Um, and it's really, ch it's changed my whole dynamic. Um, and yeah, the next like year, two years, five years, it's, it's going to be crazy. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more thankful for, for the opportunity that you guys gave us. Definitely, man. I'm, you know, beyond grateful to have you on board with us. And and as you guys can see, you know, Louis is an incredibly humble guy, but he is one of the hardest guys that uh, I know. And and definitely you'll see that in, uh, you know, you'll see his work ethic in his social media content when you go to follow him. But uh, it's really exciting to see that, you know, you've been able to, to take an approach where you focus on leveraging this model, not for greed, but for giving and gratitude and collaboration and being able to connect and build a group of people that are all scaling their business in a way that they're enjoying it and they're having fun and they're building something that they can look forward to. And they're not just caught up in the rat race. So guys, 
in closing, make sure you go follow Louis. Um, absolutely incredible to see the progression. And I know that this is going to be, you know, a success story that when you see next year, you're going to see, you know, an overwhelming amount of following come his way. And this, the journey is just beginning. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in as always. Links in the description. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.